And so they they have American Girl dolls, so they made um, quilt tops for those. Very nice. So, um, my one granddaughter, Paige, she is 10. And about two years ago, I there was a big art exhibit or art, um, sorry, quilt show that came to Portland. And she wanted to go. I was going to go. She said she wanted to go. So I took her with me and she got to test drive really expensive um, long <laughs> <laughs> and write her name on the quilts and they were so nice to her it's so great right and she like totally got into it <laughs> that's so great i'm pretty sure at least two of them will be quilters that's so great pretty sure. yeah that's really important it really is like that those first moments of experiencing it and having people like embrace you you know other you know I mean, you always just feel like so like oh thank goodness right like they yeah. had a good experience yeah. Well, I think telling children, yes, you can. Yeah. Is important. And, right. you know, when we do colored pencils, I don't have special colored pencils for them. We use my art pencils. Right. When we do colors, we, I use my watercolors to right. do watercolors. Right. You give them and, good materials and then it, it, it matters. Like right. we, we talked about my kid was way into art and, the cruddy stuff was kind of really frustrating. Like, give them the good stuff so that they can actually feel confident in their what they achieve, you know. I Don't agree. let the, the tools be frustrating, you know. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, all right. Yeah, we just had a conversation. My kid was, like, two days ago was, like, because I, I, we started paper piecing when she was five and because um, she wanted to make animals, and that was very easy. Paper piecing is super easy if you – you know, to can you know help them place it or whatever, and she's like, "You you didn't have any problem with me sewing on the machine." I'm like, "No, you were fine." Like, I'm a super overprotective mom, but not in the sewing room. So <laughs> she's just like very confused. Yeah, my grandkids, I'll tell you, they can do anything they want when they come here. Yeah, the youngest little sewer there, she was six at the time we made those little American Girl so six great. Or seven things and she used my brand new because she couldn't reach the pedal her foot re- wouldn't reach the pedal on the floor from my other sewing machine she used my janome uh-huh. memory craft 8200 qc machine yeah because she could put the stop and start button oh on the front that's of the great machine. right right that's great right <laughs> yeah it's like oh well you know I it's gonna to be fine it right it'll be fine it'll be fine it'll be fine yeah you know. all right so why I quilt? You've got really awesome pictures. Why do you quilt? All right. So the reason I put that in there is I don't make art quilts. I mean, they might be artistic. Yeah. But I make quilts to wrap up in. I make quilts because they're because they should be a part of our life. Right? Yeah. I, I just I don't hang textiles on the wall for the most part. Yeah. Well, I don't have any hanging on the wall that I can think of. So um, I make them because I want to use them and because I want to have them. (laughs) But also because the kids come over and the first thing they do is they grab a quilt. That's so great. And they they sort of have their favorites, you know, and they make forts out of them. And people say, oh, my gosh, I can't believe you're letting them make forts out of them. I'm like, "Eh, you know, I'll make another quilt if I have to. Right. So there's there's a pretty hardy. The the, the quilts are pretty hardy, too. Like people are always so like. They, they, they go yeah. through a lot, you know? Well, and I know that, you know, I, I intentionally quilt them in a way where I, where, um, if I know it's going to be a quilt, that's going to be like that trip around the world that was yeah. a, you know, took forever. Um, I, I quilted an overall design where I was crossing seams a lot. Right. So yeah. that it would hold up, but you know, those, both of the dogs are in there. My grandson yeah. Cooper's looking out from under there. He loves to make forts and he loves the quilts. That's so great. Um, you know, that's a so great that, fort. That's really why I do it. I hope that they'll be around. Yeah. I've been trying to make each of the kids quilts to have, you know, and especially like when they turn 12, I make them a big person quilt. Oh, that's nice. Um, but I want them to use them. I don't want them to feel like, oh, my grandma worked 200 hours on this darn thing. I should put it away. No, so they're, we they're use about quilt. using it. Yeah, that's really, mm-hmm. I really like that. How many quilts do you think you make? Like how... What's your your production level of like? Are you trying to you know? Do you? I don't know. I'm asking. Well, so I, it's it's more of a goal that I yeah. don't reach. So, I want the first probably three years ago I said okay I'm going to make twelve quilts this year, and I think I might have made 
eight, uh-huh. which is kind of a lot. And they weren't, there were no baby quilts included. So wow, that's, that's a lot. A lot. Yeah. Um, I, it depends on how, well, at least five, because we have sisters challenges going on. <laughs> and, um, and I have a lot of, I have, you know, then I just finished three this year already because of the, the girl taking them to Rwanda with right. me. Cause I'm going there even in a couple of weeks to take those home. Amazing. Um, so, you know, I would say maybe 10 a year. Yeah. That's a, that's, maybe, a, that's good. On a big that's year. a lot. All right. Well, cause in the middle of the night you know that, I know so. I do too and I have to say that that Im- impacts on what patterns I choose because I feel like my life is super complicated and I don't want my quilting to be complicated like I'm not in the I mood really for teaching. it yeah mm-hmm. do you feel that way I, just, I do I don't like quilts where there's so much you have to cut out so many pieces I have to tell you I hate cutting I just <laughs> hate that and so um and because I always do it wrong uh-huh I don't, like I go, I was like, oh, it's a two and a half. I cut two. Right. That's because so, you're cutting at night. It's my situation too. After, I know I've cut two and a half. Then in the morning, I have, I'm like, oh, it's only two. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I have to enjoy it. And I, I, I will say, so I've been listening to a lot of the other uh, people that you've been talking to. Yeah. And you ask kind of which, what part of the process do I, you get the most satisfaction yeah. from? Yeah. And it's really like deciding what I want to make is the part I like the best. That's and interesting. And so I get a little bored about halfway through the piecing. Yeah. And I get, then I get excited to start quilting it, and then I get bored again about halfway through the quilting. That's really interesting. Because I'm kind of ready to get the juice, creative juices flowing again. Now, how do you do the binding? What, what, what choices? Do you always do the same kind of binding, or what do you do for binding? Do you do... Um, do you do it by I, hand or do you do it like... So I sew it on by machine, but I really enjoy sewing it down by hand. Yeah, me too. I like the look of yeah. it sewing down by hand. I do. But and I kind of need to say goodbye to the quilt. It's my, I, you know... It's like, it's the only hand part you do, right? Right, right. <laughs> so I, I think it's, for me, it's that. I've always liked stitching though. So um, it's that, um, but I don't always hand stitch it down. It depends on where the quilt's going. Yeah. So like these three that I just finished are going to t- on toddlers and they're going to get washed and I don't really know like, you know, how they'll hold up, right? Because of where they live too. And so, um, so I stitched those, I yeah. machine stitched those down. Those make sense because yeah, you yeah. want them sturdy. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. So you put down the early years. Tell me about the early years. You have a picture of a, a <laughs> Those quilt. are really quilts. So when I, when I, so I, I've jumped back into quilting twice. So this was this top quilt there. That was a bunch of leftover quilt scraps or fabric scraps I had from, I don't know what, <coughs> no idea. And I decided, Oh, I want to make a quilt. And so I didn't have a pattern. I just drew that out and figured out, I didn't even know how I figured it out, but I did. Because like looking at it now, I probably would have to have a pattern, but I didn't then. That's amazing. My, my brain was younger. And um, <coughs> so I made that. And then I thought it was really hideous. And so, and I didn't know, it was when, oh, machine free motion quilting was just coming back. And um, so I just put it away because it was really ugly. And then I forgot about it. And then, um, then I wanted to make again and so I just instead of working really hard on a top because yeah. I'm you know more proficient at doing a lot of things now um I decided to practice the free motion quilting on this that's great so I just got some fabric I, I didn't take a picture of the back but I just picked fabric that I liked the fabric for the back so the worst case scenario I'd have it on the other side uh-huh. and then I just practiced on it and that's I just so really I just did an overall stipple just to kind of figure out how to do it on my machine yeah yeah so very cool and then, that other one down there in the bottom, when my yeah. daughter, who, well, I shouldn't say online how old she is. So she has children of her own now. Uh-huh. And um, that was my first attempt at sort of blending a lot of things I love into one form of art or one piece of art. And so first I did, that's. So um, explain, because in, the... in case people, people will be listening. Oh, um, so tell me what it is. And I'll, a, I'll put a picture a baby, up. But Yeah. So it's a baby quilt and it's kind of, it's on satin polyester fabric. Uh-huh. And it is um, 
cro- uh, the top of it is crocheted. Like the whole thing. Like you put an yeah. overlay of crochet that's I almost did. like lace it's crochet, thread. right? It's, thread, it's very, right. very uh, delicate crocheting. Yeah. And so so then I had put that on top and then I, I tacked it. How did I do it? I don't even know. So I think I made the quilt first. Really, really cruddy polyester flannel is on the back. And I tied the quilt. You tied first. it with the little bows. Are those tied? Is that what's t- keeping it together? No, those are stitched on over the top of where I tied the quilt. Interesting. And then I attached the um, the lace, you know, the crocheted lace over the top of it. Right. And I think I tied it down like in all in like it sort of has corners. Those are squares. Oh, interesting. And then I um, threaded ribbon around the outside through the openings of the lace. Super interesting. So. It's really pretty. I'll put up a, a picture of it, but it's okay. very, it's very detailed. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But you know, poor quality products and yeah, I'm surprised it's held up because that all, all the grandkids used that quilt. Really? When they were... Oh yeah. Sweet. Love so. it. All right. Yeah, this is the textile art section is out oh. of this world. Okay. So, so again, we're talking about at the beginning. So this is where I said, okay, I want to make, I sort of want to quilt. I love to sew. I love to paint. <laughs> so uh, this, this was my attempt at doing all of the above. And it's really sort of my favorite thing. So that table runner lives in Rwanda and my son couldn't, <laughs> couldn't find a table runner that he liked <laughs> for their house in Rwanda. So I said, okay, so I'm going to make something. And actually this, I made this after I came back from my first trip to the sister's quilt show because I saw where, you know, the, if you look at the pieced um, fabric there. Uh So I just saw something made kind of like that. And I thought, okay, that has sort of a um, multicultural feel and vibe to it. Now how big, so so, again, people aren't going to, I'm going to post it, but how big is this? Can you give us a sense of how big this is? This is probably um, 24 by 36, 38, somewhere around there. Okay. And, and the binding and the fabric on the back, I don't yeah. know if that's in any of the pictures. That is some of the fabric. Oh, that top picture has the back. That's some of that Contagi fabric I brought back from Rwanda with me on that first trip. Very so that cool. was sort of my design inspiration. And so then I... So I pieced all the um, those strips together and then cut them into uneven width, you know, lengths like that. Right. Just kind of put it together. And then that's where I wanted to put the artistic component. So those flowers um, are all hand painted with inks on white prepared for dyeing fabric. You cotton. did that. Did you do that? Yes. yes. All right. So you took and made very elaborate fa- uh, flowers. Yeah. And put it on, what did you call it? On It's prepared for dyeing, PFD. PFD, so prepared for dyeing. And what kind of? It's quilting cotton that has already been, I don't, well, if I was to do it at home, I would soak it in soda ash. So it just prepare, it strips the fabric of all of like the sizing and everything uh-huh. and makes it so that the, the dye particles will actually adhere to the fabric well. Got it. So that I did that, and I used um, I I think all of the painting on there. I don't know why it's so. I must have had it rolled up when I took that picture, so it's not very flat. Um, all of the dyes I use are ink tents, um, dye pencils. Mm-hmm. Okay, tell me again. When... You can get those ink tents. I n k t e n s e. Ink t- ink tents. Okay. Yeah, I think they're by Derwent is the okay. manufacturer. And I used for the, instead of water, because I, I used them, you know, like watercolor style, I used textile medium instead of water. And then I, you know, so I paint, I drew, I just freeform drew some, because I wanted it to be pretty primitive looking. Um, those, those pieces on there, I let it dry for 24 hours. And then I heat set it just in case, even though you don't have to. And then I heat set it again, because <laughs> I'm always really worried about that. And then I hand washed all of that so that any loose dye particles were gone. So it was pretty good to go by then. So then I just cut out the shapes and um, I machine applique those on there. Very cool. Um, I might have put them on. What did I, I? I don't remember if I ironed them on there first and then machine applique around them. Uh-huh. I might have done that. 
actually, since it was going to be a table runner, it really didn't matter. Yeah. And then I did just free form all the vines that you're seeing there. Very cool. And then I went through and I start and I did machine free motion quilting throughout it. And I tried really hard.